When you play dynasty fantasy football, obviously everything's going to be left to each person's interpretation of certain players, certain values, etc. The problem is when we tend to see how everybody else thinks in dynasty, most people just go along with it. And in reality, there are a lot of very big value discrepancies on what on what we think is true, on what actually is true given stats, given contract situations, given age, and then what the whole community thinks is true. So we're going to get into a big one today. This is going to be specifically for Dynasty Superflex Leagues, which I know most of you play in. And we have found a value discrepancy that really just doesn't make any sense. And, and honestly, we might even argue about it a little bit. So stay tuned for some debate. Do us a huge favor and make sure you've liked the video and make sure you're subscribed as well dynasty content if you play dynasty you're gonna love the channel you're gonna love the content so make sure you're subscribed make sure you check out our merch eh, merch ah eh, he's actually wearing merch and not a wolf shirt this week <laughs> so you'll never see that wolf it's a shirt real again. shame and next week big announcement stay tuned all right so simon you did the primary amount of research on this and because you forgot your computer at work you are uh going off of your <laughs> phone which is really professional Really? I mean, if you were wearing the wolf shirt, I might punch you. Yeah, like, this is on, a crap on Simon like, Day. It's, it's crap on Simon Day, yep. for sure. Yep. Um, but, it's Simon, you, you did the research for this. I want you to kind of introduce the premise of this video. Yeah. Uh, so, right off the bat here, we're going to start by introducing the QB14 in Dynasty right now. He's signed a four-year contract right now through 2024. He's 30 years old, and last year he averaged 17.8 points per game. That was QB 13. So at 30 years old, he's the QB 14 in Dynasty, 13th QB in points per game last year. He had 32.8 pass attempts per game, 7.3 yards per attempt. That's also 13th in the league. His catchable pass rate, however, is where things start to drop off. At 73%, he was 37th in the league among quarterbacks that played. 37th. That's pretty horrible. It's bad. His true passer rating was 80.6. That was 22nd in the league. QBR was 58.3. That was 12th again, so he's he's picking it back up. Not bad. But his true completion percentage, which is when you factor out unpressured throwaways and dropped passer uh, dropped passes, was only 69. Nice. Not but nice. Not it nice. was only not 22nd nice. no. in the league. Yeah. He also. Wait, I always swear we get one of those. Stats only had 6.4 <laughs> average. <laughs> I know we do. It's awesome. <laughs> He only had 6.4 <laughs> adjusted yards per pass in the temp, per pass attempt. Passing. Passing. He's passing attempt. All right. That's <laughs> Dak Prescott. And I know a lot of you are Cowboys fans, and you're stunned. You're finding out Dak Prescott's not a top five quarterback. He's actually below average in a lot of stats. But he's he's QB, what did I say, 14 in Dynasty right now? Yeah. Which, okay. he's, which he started to fall a little bit. But when you, let's talk about value. Let's talk about his value in startup drafts. Because when you're looking at where he's going in startup drafts, he's actually still going like in the second round a lot of yeah, times. Yeah, he goes in the second or third most of the time. He just now slided starting. Or, wow. Started, started sliding, sliding. Thank you. Into the third round. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, but now here we're going to introduce to you another player. Uh, this guy. Unnamed QB2. Unnamed QB. <laughs> at 26 years old, this guy is on a four-year contract. Signed. $40 million per year, so, same as Dak Prescott, sounds familiar. through 2026, oh. so two more years, but he's 26 years old. But does he have a potential out? <laughs> <laughs> this guy averaged 18.4 fantasy points per game. That was 10th, and on 29.5 pass attempts per game, so he is throwing a little bit less. He averaged 6.8 yards per attempt, less, so that was 24th in the league, but his catchable pass rate was 79th. It was 79% for 12th in the league. That's decent. True passer rating was 94. That's 8th in the league. Decent. His QBR was 7th in the league at 60.7. And his true completion percentage was 75.7. Good for 1st in the league. He also had 6.4 adjusted yards per pass attempt. If you noticed, this guy was well above average in a lot of those stats. And yeah. it's actually Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, four years younger than Dak Prescott, is also on a $40 million per year contract, averaging more fantasy points per game. He actually, not not only does he average more fantasy points per game, he's a lot more efficient. And, and that's what we're saying is, why is Dak Prescott, we know the answer, it's because he plays for the Cowboys, why is Dak Prescott, yeah. Dak Prescott going so much higher than Daniel Jones in Dynasty? 
according to our ADP, almost two full rounds. So Dak is at his ADP is twenty one point seven, and Daniel Jones is forty three point one. So here's what I hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna present my I want you to push back where you think you want to push back because it will be good if you do. Yeah. I'm gonna present what I think is I, I I honestly I do not see the disconnect I, I do not see where people aren't getting this. Dak Prescott, look, Dak, I mean, in in the or especially in the earlier years of his career, he had a lot of rushing upside. He was a premier elite quarterback for your Superflex team in Dynasty. Uh, and he still is a great asset. He absolutely is. But when you're looking at Daniel Jones, I mean, Daniel Jones is essentially what Dak was when Dak was valued into the first round of Dynasty startups. And I'm not saying that's where Daniel Jones should be going, but at the same time, you're getting to the fourth round and getting Daniel Jones there. Daniel Jones, again, the contract situation, like you mentioned, if we're really playing Dynasty in three-year windows, which we should be, you should not be playing Dynasty for anything past three years. Daniel Jones has a better three-year window production-wise than Dak Prescott does, in my opinion. When you're looking at the rushing yards per game, Daniel Jones, 44 rushing yards per game with seven rushing touchdowns last year. And Dak Prescott, 15 rushing yards a game with run one rushing touchdown. Dak Prescott does not have the rushing upside anymore. It's why his value has started to fall, and it's why it's going to continue to fall. Because he's essentially Kirk Cousins when you get down to it now. And Kirk Cousins is great. And I think Kirk Cousins is even a maybe undervalued in Dynasty. However, when you have Dak Why Prescott... Why is Dak's value so much higher? It, it, I mean, it, we just... It, and we kind of went into this in the wide receivers video, you know, with, with DK Metcalf and D, Debo Samuel and why they're going two, three rounds apart when they're literally the exact same in production. And in fact, Debo has a higher upside. It's going to be the same thing here. I mean, with Daniel Jones, again, the contract, and I know the argument is going to be they have a from him at least There's, they have a potential out. And, and again, I'm not really worried about shorting somebody on their contract situation based on a potential out, because if we did that, we'd have to apply that to so many players in fantasy. It would drastically affect how we value people. So when you're looking at three year windows from a production standpoint, when you're looking at ceiling, when you're looking at rushing upside, when you're looking at team situation, I don't think the team situation is mu much worse. I think Brian Dable's a better coach than Mike McCarthy. And I, I don't, I, you can trash it in the comments if you want to, but I just, I'm not super high. We all saw it last year. I'm not super high on Mike McCarthy as a coach. Uh, I like, but I like Brian Dable a lot and Brian Dable offensive guy. So I, I help me, help me understand. Yeah. So one of the best points Simon made earlier while we were talking about Daniel Jones is that one of the best things we have going for Jones in the giants offense is that the giants aren't going to be getting a high draft pick anytime soon. They're not going to be in the running for some elite level prospect. Again, they got there what they thought was elite level prospect in Daniel Jones a few years ago. And honestly, he's worked out much more than I thought he ever would after the first couple seasons of him playing football. And really all it took was just some actual coaching and quarterback development. So he definitely has that going for him there from a contract perspective. I, I do think um, that it's going to be about the same. So with the four year gap, you do want to give Daniel Jones probably the edge because when it comes to contract security, Daniel Jones does have the potential out in two years. Dak Dak's contract is up in two years. So everything's kind of up in the air after that for both assets. Then you want to look at the rushing upside, which Avery already touched on a little bit, but this is actually really significant. And I think it's something that we kind of just assumed Dak Prescott would continue on after his injury. And we really, when, when we took into account all of his points per game and, and how much he produced before the injury, we just assumed he was going to do the same thing. And if he wasn't going to run as much, he would just pass more, but it, it actually changed like a lot. I mean, when you look before the injury, he was consistently getting two to 300 rushing yards for anywhere from three to six touchdowns. And then obviously his historic nine game run before he got injured. And then after that, I mean, his rushing upside being cut in half, uh, actually less than half yeah. and his passing upside really didn't go up very much at all. I guess he passed it a lot in 2021, but Actually, he matched that in 2019. So that said, his ceiling from a points per game, uh, you know, weekly perspective is going to change. And when you look at his game blog this past season, he was only a uh, quarterback one, I think, four times, if I'm not mistaken. You can check me on that. But uh, Daniel Jones, on the other hand, was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times he was a QB one yeah. um, on a on a weekly basis. And that is just attributed to his rushing upside and the fact that his floor is just going to be so much lower because of, even if he isn't passing very higher. well, or his floor is going to be so much higher because yeah. even if he isn't passing very well, he's going to at least give, to give you some yardage on the ground. This all being said, I think one of the biggest arguments that you can make 
for why Dak and Daniel Jones are still, they should be in the same tier. The, I think where we disagree is that you think Daniel Jones should be higher. I'm saying I think Dak should be lower. And I think Dak should be closer to where Daniel Jones is going. I, I think, think there's both. enough risk with Daniel Jones that where he's going in Dynasty Startups right now is very reasonable. I think taking him in the early fourth, that's as high as I'm comfortable taking him. Now, when you go with... Um, Mike McCarthy now actually calling plays in Dallas's offense. This is where I can see a little bit of pushback for pro Dak because now how much, how much more upside from a passing perspective can Dak have with Mike McCarthy calling the plays? I mean, they're probably going to be running the ball a lot less. In fact, I'm certain of it because I've looked over the numbers over the last 10 years where Mike McCarthy has called plays in green Bay. And we're going to do a video on that in the future to kind of talk about Tony Pollard. But the, this is, this is my point in that being, I think it's really close. I think it's really close. What Daniel Jones lacks in passing upside, Dak makes up for, and vice versa with rushing upside for both of those guys. So all that to say, I, I think they should be close. I think Dak should be valued less. He, he shouldn't be valued with as much upside as everyone's expecting him to continue to have every single year when he just has limitations now. And, and really, my argument is that I would just straight up take Daniel Jones over Dak Prescott. And and like the title says, we think you're playing Dynasty wrong. And I, I think, why are you taking Dak Prescott in the second round at all? Big other market than, bias. Other than the market value. And I think we've all kind of been brainwashed into thinking that's where Dak should go. And I don't think that's right. Not only is Daniel Jones adding weapons and Darren Waller, Paris Campbell, Jalen Hyatt, his wide receiver one last year was Richie James. So Daniel Jones has nowhere to go but up. And, yeah, and, and that's, a honestly, really, that's a really good point. Not to say he's improved his completion percentage every single yeah. year since he came into the league. And 60, now he has 61.9, 62, coach. 64, 67 last season. And, and honestly, I think the biggest issue that this has kind of brought to light for me is that, yes, we play in Superflex Dynasty Leagues, but some of these quarterbacks are being pushed up too much. Like, why, why is Dak going that high? He's not an elite asset. He's not an elite He's score. Young, he, wasn't even, like, he wasn't even a QB1 in points per game last year. I, I want to know my main question, because my, my main counterpoint to that was going to be um, that Daniel Jones, when you look at his passing log on Sleeper, if one whoever's editing this will put it up, uh, I mean, it's pretty much not good at all. Daniel Jones was propped up by his rushing upside and was still a QB1 last year. If Daniel Jones takes even the slightest, if Daniel Jones even increases his passing production 20%, you're talking about climbing higher into the wide receiver one, or the, sorry, the QB1 rate, because he, he's got that floor. You mentioned that. He's got the floor. He has room to improve as a passer. He, but absolutely, when you're looking at the Giants wide receiver core, Paris Campbell was added. Jalen Hyatt was added. Darren Waller was added. And a lot of a lot of people would be like, yeah, those guys are mid. Maybe. But they lost Richie James. But they lo- I know, so write him off but but Darren Waller is probably the most underrated one out of that I'm not drafting Darren Waller I don't really like Darren Waller in dynasty right now because he just can't stay healthy and I worry about him long term however if he does stay healthy him, him, and, Dan- years, him right? and Daniel Jones I mean something something crazy like that him and Daniel Jones will be ridiculous da- I mean Darren Waller could eat I mean I think he's the favorite to be the leading receiver on that team this year. Yeah, yeah. he is. And, and now to Dak's credit, even though we're knocking him a little bit on his, you know, not being a QB one weekly more than Daniel Jones, he did miss a significant amount of time last season with that injury. But now that's the second season where he's missed a lot of time. And that's beginning to be a little bit concerning as well. Yep. Not predicting injury, not really accounting for that in his, you know, significant value, but that's a, a little bit of a negative. Daniel Jones has struggled with some, he's been banged up a lot as well so so here's my question for you yeah. because you said you would still take Dak over Daniel Jones no I think they go in the same tier and, and I think Dak should be so valued who, who are you Daniel drafting who are you drafting um I'm so I'm taking them 50 50 I'm more comfortable taking Jan- Daniel Jones where he's falling more often than Dak Prescott so you yeah. mentioned that you think Daniel Jones has more risk and I want to know what the risk is with Daniel Jones and Dynasty um, well, like we've already said, I think the big market bias for the Cowboys is a legitimate, like, like that is real. It's and kept it, value that it is. automatically means that Dak Prescott's going to maintain his value more often and longer than Daniel Jones. I know the New York Giants, like, obviously they have a big market as well, but it's nowhere near what the Dallas Cowboys are. I mean, look at where Tony Pollard's being valued right now. If he were in mm. any other offense in the NFL, he would be valued less than where he is right I'm now. Sorry, I don't like that reason. And I don't think, the, I don't well, think big market bias is enough of a reason for me to take one player over another. Then tell me why so many Bears, Bears. players are overvalued. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not you saying know? big market bias and isn't a real thing. Y- yeah, but that, Justin Fields. That's obvi- just one I mean, reason. That's not every single reason that I have. Yeah, but on top but, of that, can I make a counterpoint? Yeah, uh-huh. I want to hear you on top of that first, and okay. then let me go. Yeah. So on top of that, I think that um, Dak Prescott as a passer, 
I I am very, very intrigued to see what Mike McCarthy does this season. I agree with that. And for me, that is sometimes worth it for me to invest in Dak Prescott because seeing where he was valued last season going at the tail end of the first and him not even being close to that makes me wonder how much is it going to change next season if he has a really successful season from a points per game perspective. I think he has more... I think it's more possible that he goes up higher than Daniel Jones goes next season because I think it's also more likely that Daniel Jones matches what he does last season and Dak could outproduce what he does last season by a more significant margin. So I think that would mean Daniel Jones would not take a step up in the passing game. I really don't see that with those I with, don't with the increased weapons. Like, well, he that, was he was yes, really bare yeah. bones, like not super well, productive. In the passing I mean, you game. saw the beating that Daniel Jones took last season consistently well, too. Yeah. I think he's probably going to run less. Like, if I were a betting man, with them signing him to that contract, they're not going to want to put him in harm's way consistently. Like Even though his legs are good, his legs are really great. But if he takes a step up as a passer, that automatically means he should be running less. Am I right? Uh, maybe. I didn't feel like he took a ton of big hits last year. Like, I feel like he was I mean, fairly, there's a classic fair- one where he's like, foaming at the mouth well that, that was two seasons ago and the one where he tripped but, in the open field like yeah, that was funny. probably yes. more embarrassing than that, any was, of them. that was good but but he does a pretty good job like a lot of his runs are just uh, out of the offense like they were some design runs like, like and they're like, really like open field i think they'll be doing less design runs with him well, i, I don't him think more. he takes like the beating that a josh allen takes is what no. i'm saying um no. here's my last argument Dak Prescott's approaching 30, and we are not people to panic about age and dynasty at all. But look at Russell Wilson and look at Matthew Stafford just in the last few years. We can't keep expecting every quarterback to last as long as the elite ones. Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, I think, have messed up our perception of how long good quarterbacks last. And Dak Prescott is just a good quarterback. He's He's not not a great quarterback. So what, what is making us think he has five years? I mean, look Look at Matthew Stafford even. Just one no. one injury has kind of sidelined yeah. him for a whole season yeah. last year where he was just yeah. horrible, messed him up. And, and Russell Wilson, where he turns into nobody. Yeah. Uh, that's what's starting to scare me. Well, I'm the, not out on Dak. He's only, yeah. only yeah. going to be 30. And the nice thing with Dak, and that's why we're not accounting for anything past two seasons. I think from a value perspective, longevity-wise, like they, are, they should be valued around the same in that metric. But with Dak, like he is, even though he's 30, like he, when he got his injury, he was approaching his physical prime, and he's still in the midst of his prime right, right now as a quarterback. He's still, you know, physically up to where, up to standard, and mentally like he he can't really get much better other than getting experience and he's a seasoned veteran at this point so with him I think he could be able to adjust to the fact that he lost his rushing upside better than guys like Russell Wilson did because Russ uses legs for 10 years and then he struggled with injury and by that point he was past his prime and then once he lost a step he fell off so much because we didn't realize how much he relied on his legs so often yeah. Dak isn't anymore and he hasn't for a couple years. So that makes me think that he's going to adjust a little bit better, especially in an offense that's going to be calling plays significantly differently than, than how Kellen Moore did. Yeah. So I I would argue that the risk lies with Dak more than it lies with Daniel Jones. I'm more comfortable with Daniel Jones over the next three years. In the I United really States think football. they're, I really think they're equally as risky. I just do like, so I think that's when you go with, um, you just go with the younger one. Cause why not? I mean, if they have an equal risk, I'm going to go with the younger one who was scoring more points. And in Dynasty, it's still about I mean, winning your leagues. And, and we talk about Dak being a passer. I mean, Dak. I mean, if we're being a hundred percent honest about Dak Prescott, and he just played, read off he's his played, passing stats. What seven years, right? And he's gone over four thousand yards twice. So it's not like he's like just. It's not like forty five hundred yards every year, like volume wise. It's it, it's he definitely like he definitely has the seventeen points per game per year like style in him like uh, which is go the Kirk Cousins yeah. style like, this is so funny I I am not one to be a uh even remotely a supporter of Cowboys players <laughs> we're gonna get crapped on so bad for this because I don't again, see how Dak plays for the Cowboys and, and you'll have and, to let us know in the comments what you disagree with because we really just listed off statistics I, yeah yeah I, I think Dak has always proven to be mid, and every single year, all you hear from the media is Dak Prescott going to be MVP this year. He's a front runner to be the MP- MVP. He's a dark horse to be the MVP this year. Like, <laughs> and his his statistics never line up. Big with market that. B- media bias is definitely real. I just I'm not going to use that to take a player or another. I'm, like, I'm still not taking Justin Fields anywhere. No, I don't care about the I don't no. care about his value, like potentially being safe because of the because he like, plays for the Bears. 
and and that's it. And to be fair, I mean, New York is a huge market as well. The Cowboys are just yeah, the biggest is, market in the NFL. Like the that's Cow- yeah. it's just yeah. that's just how it's gonna be. Yeah. And Jerry Jones is gonna Dak Prescott's gonna play good this year. <laughs> he's gonna pass Daniel Jones in fantasy. So that's what we think. I don't know. I, I think this is I think this is indicative of a bigger problem in Dynasty where we see all these guys like nobody's going to be taking nobody's taking Drake London over T Higgins, even though I'd, if my, a lot of people would much rather have Drake London because of where T Higgins goes in every single Dynasty draft. And honestly, I mean, yeah, I, and I'm, again, they have the classic example T Higgins, but I mean, there's there's literally plenty of them. Derrick Henry is a good example yeah. as well. I like, seriously think at this point, the only reason you've got a two round gap between Dak and Daniel Jones is just the name Dak Prescott, like and this guy is just, he's so much more popular than Daniel Jones is market value bias aside. Like he's just a more popular quarterback. Like when, yeah. when you think of watching football, you, th- I mean, Dak Prescott is kind of up there. You see him all the time. Daniel Jones has been horrible for the last four seasons until this year or the last yeah. three seasons yeah. until this year. So it's just, it's a less sexy pick. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let us know in the comments what you think of this. Let us know some other things in Dynasty Fantasy Football that you're noticing. There are big value discrepancies on that we're just not, that people aren't catching on to. Let us know what you've taken advantage of. Let us know what you think about this one. Do us a favor. Make sure you like the video and make sure you're subscribed. We've got Dynasty content coming out all year round. So make sure you're subscribed if you play Dynasty Fantasy Football. We appreciate you watching. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you later.